everybody, Trevor here, and welcome to my first non-Thomas Mini Review. And for today's topic, we'll be looking at the 12-minute short film, Once Upon a Studio, which was made to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. It first premiered on June 11, 2023 at the NSC, where we pronounce it, Film Festival for Reviews. Then it aired on ABC on October 15th, which was last Sunday, and didn't air on Disney Plus until the day after that. Though, I regret not seeing it until October 17th, but that's only because I didn't realize it was on Disney Plus until then. Man, I hate when I miss out on something. Anyways, the premise of this short is when a total of 543 different Disney characters from more than 85 feature films gather around at the front of the animation studio for a huge group photo celebrating the 100th anniversary. It starts off with real-life people who work at the studio leaving home for the day when Bernie Madison talks to an intern wondering about if the pictures on the walls ever came to life. And as they all left, Mickey Mouse, who was in a production cell of Mickey's birthday party, comes to life and calls for Tinkerbell and asks her if all the employees are gone. When she nodded, Mickey was like, Oh boy! and jumped out of the frame along with his girlfriend Minnie Mouse. And when Minnie Mouse calls out, we get to see a bunch of different Disney cartoon characters, both 2D and CGI, jumping out of their respective production cells and join together for a group photo at the front of the lobby. Now keep in mind that this short is for characters created by Walt Disney Animation Studios, so don't expect there to be any Pixar, Touchstone, or anything that's not part of the official Disney Animation canon. Let's break down the five best moments in the short. The first thing is that we get to see a lot of Disney cameos and appearances, as I said before, doing a lot of fun things around the studio. And not only we get to see the more popular ones like the Disney princesses, but we also get to see the more obscure and forgotten characters like the cows from Home on the Range, Chicken Little, My Little Thatch from Atlantis, and even Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Man, I love Easter eggs, especially when it involves rare Disney characters like them. Oh, and that's another thing. Not only that plenty of the current voice actors returned as the respective characters, including Dwayne Johnson as Maui and Raymond Percy as Flash, but we also get to hear a bunch of archival recordings from previous voice actors such as Pat Carroll as Ursula, Sterling Holloway as Ka, Pooh Bear, and Cheshire Cat, Bobby Driscoll as Peter Pan, and most surprisingly of all, Robin Williams as the Genie, which was sourced from unused recordings by him where he says, I haven't seen a fall like that since Rome. And honestly, I think that's a very nice throwback to some of the previous voices who passed away a long time ago, because not only is it much cheaper than to hire new voice actors, but it also pays respect to great people like Robin Williams, Sterling Holloway, Pat Carroll, etc. Now for the third best thing about this short. After Rapunzel hits Ka with a frying pan saving Clarabelle Cow from the hypnosis, Mickey then sees a portrait of Walt Disney himself, we even get to hear some touching, emotional music from the Mary Poppins song known as Feed the Birds in the background, as Mickey takes off his hat in front of the portrait to finally remember his legacy. But when Minnie calls out to Mickey that everyone is ready and waiting at the lobby, Mickey calmly says to the portrait, Gotta go. On with the show. Which is very touching to hear if you ask me. As everyone got together, Goofy was about to set the camera ready only for him to fall off the ladder, leading the camera to break into pieces. But luckily, fix -It felix Jr. was able to help mend the camera with his magic hammer, and everything seems to go according to plan. While that was happening, everyone started singing When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio, which in my opinion, was the absolute best part of the short, especially at the very end where the group photo was finally taken, and the film ends with the tagline, To all who imagined with us, laughed with us, and dreamed with us, thank you which makes it a perfect ending to the short. In all honesty, this is the best thing that's ever come out of Disney in terms of 2023 because it just goes to show you that modern Disney isn't all bad. In fact, this is one of the reasons why I still respect Disney regardless of their failures these days, and that's including most of their crappy live-action remakes. And furthermore, in terms of cons, I honestly can't think of any. The 2D and CGI animations for each character are very spot-on, the plot was fun to watch, and it even has a ton of classic nods to the previous generations like I said about them bringing back more obscure characters that no one seems to remember these days. So therefore, 
I give this 12 minute short a 10 out of 10 gold stars because it's really that impressive and really that spectacular. And no matter what generation you're from, this is the perfect short for you, me, and everybody else in the Disney fandom. I suggest you give it a watch. And if you already have, let me know what you think of it down below. Do you agree with everything I say, or do you think it could have been better? Because I really want to know. But please don't leave any mean comments down below, especially towards Disney. I mean, I know the Walt Disney Company has a very shoddy reputation nowadays, but you still have to give them at least some credit when it comes to their MA movies and shows. And no, I'm not going to defend the two Bobs or anybody at the company for their stupid decisions. Sure, Chapek did step down and Iger came back as CEO, but Iger isn't really helping anymore, especially when it comes to handling constructive criticism about woke culture. Oh, and I have good news and bad news. The good news is, Disney month is almost over, and Halloween is just around the corner. The bad news is, it's been announced since September 30th that my family and I are going to go on vacation to Walt Disney World this spring. Yeah, I should have told you guys this a long time ago, but the reason why I didn't is because I don't want you guys to feel upset or scared. Though I'm sure I'll be okay for the most part. Just keep praying for our safety during our stay at Disney World. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.